Hi, good evening everyone. My name is Ravi. I am the co-founder CEO of Zeev and I have with me Ghan Vashisht. He is the co-founder CTO of Zeev. Today we are here to talk about the uh, challenges of managing infrastructure in the blockchain space, especially for enterprises. Uh, first, a uh, uh, bit about that we have come a long way. We started uh, in blockchain space in 2016. And um, at that time, you know, 17, 18, 19, uh, it was mostly about POCs, pilots. And now, fortunately, in the last two years, we are seeing a lot of production implement uh, implementations. So we are obviously past that stage where nobody is talking about whether blockchain can play a role in enterprises or not. There are quite a few use cases which are well established. There are quite a few production implementations that are going, uh, that are happening. One of the Deloitte study uh, uh, shows that uh, blockchain is one of the top five strategic priorities for enterprises. But there are quite a few challenges to blockchain adoption uh, in enterprises and overall. And one of the major challenges is managing the blockchain infrastructure. And if you talk about some of the core challenges, one, uh, the way some of the enterprise blockchains are implemented, most of the nodes or the infrastructure resides in one common cloud within the organization. And that goes against the tenets of decentralization. So what we see is that decentralization per se is missing. When we talk about a consortium use case, the use case itself, uh, uh, you know, there's an implicit uh, uh, architecture in the use case that even if the use case has been started by one organization, still uh, uh, rest of the party should have an independence where they can host their own nodes, creating a decentralized or distributed structure. Second, uh, cost and time. Uh, manually deploying a, a hyperledger or any other permission blockchain network takes a huge amount of time. At the same time, it takes a lot of cost and there's a lot of ongoing cost and I will talk about the cost in the next slide. There's a huge cost of setting up, huge cost of owning it and uh, still there are no standards or benchmarks that one can leverage to uh, set up a very standardized blockchain infrastructure. One of the uh, uh, core challenges, complexity of scaling. So once you have set up the infrastructure, how to scale up? Because all the networks start small. They start with six to 10 nodes, but as more and more parties join the consortium, the number of nodes needs to scale up. As well as when the number of transactions keep on increasing, then again you require scaling up. So we in Web2 world have been used to uh, AWS and other, other means where you know, we can scale up, scale down on, on the will. The same kind of infrastructure, same kind of uh, uh, features we require in the enterprise blockchain networks. Complex to uh, understand and adopt the lack of expertise, uh, how to deploy a very standardized deployment architecture, how to make it decentralized, etc. So that know-how, expertise, skill set is still lacking. And, uh, uh, and, and, and sometimes, you know, for small to mid-sized companies, it does not make even sense to hire all those skill sets. So it, it's cost prohibitive at times. And then, uh, uh, as I mentioned, you know, lack of standards for security and optimization. Because uh, we have seen, uh, we have few banking customers and, and one of the banking customers in Singapore mentioned that now we have finally got uh, around cloud implementing in the, in the bank. And talking about blockchain, talking about these distributed networks is altogether an, another ballgame. So there are no standards how to manage security if you talk about healthcare institutions or other financial institutions. They don't know how to manage when the, some of the nodes are going to be hosted outside, how to still uh, uh, manage all the regulatory compliances and security within the network. And as uh, uh, about the cost, so cost is not just about deploying a network. That's uh, still, I would say, a one-time build-up cost. But post that, there's a huge uh, amount of monitoring, analytics, etc. is required once the network has been deployed. You require a network which is of enterprise-grade uh, enterprise quality in terms of throughput, in terms of performance, in terms of security and optimization. And at the same time, you would like to scale up any time uh, as you want. And then, you know, especially when you're working with Fabric, as more and more organizations join your consortium, requiring more organizations, how to connect them using into your node. And one of the challenge, uh, practical challenge people face is when they scale up the consortium is that you require a heterogeneous node cloud deployments. Because when, you, uh, when one of your consortium partner joins your network, they may be using a different cloud. 
or they may want to uh, set up the network on premise or within a private data center. Now, how to manage uh, uh, that kind of onboarding is again a very big pain point when we talk about enterprise level consortiums. So, what we need is not a, a, a plain vanilla automation framework. What we re require is a, is a much more configurable, highly automated and which seamlessly integrates with the underlying cloud as well as on-premise cloud environments. So, what we require is that in-depth configuration so that once you go to a console, you are not, you are pretty much uh, relying on that console to do everything. Whether you are deploying on one cloud environment, whether you are clouding, uh, deploying on multiple cloud environments, everything should be able to, uh, 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 you would be able to manage using the same platform, same console. And then, you know, inviting onboarding consortium partners on the chain, again, should be very seamless. Because otherwise what happens is, it, the onus falls on the uh, consortium owner that how to uh, deploy a node for an external party and then, you know, bring that node, manage all the access controls, etc. within the larger network. And uh, heterogeneous cloud deployment is, is of course, uh, uh, a need because nobody wants to get locked in into one single cloud. And at the same time, in quite a few industries, there is a pressing need of on-premise or private data center cloud deployments. Security practices, uh, as I mentioned, cannot be stressed enough. Uh, even with blockchain infrastructure, there you require server hardening, you require all kind of security and compliances to be built into the, uh, into the deployment itself. So there's no point in having deploying a network using a different tool and then, you know, applying all the security uh, uh, features on top of it. And then analytics and proactive monitoring is something which is uh, very much required to ensure that the health of the network is fine. And you would be able to proactively monitor to see if uh, some or the other node is out of sync or is not behaving as it's supposed to or somebody is having access controls which then they are not supposed to. And then control of cost and time to market, you know, as we know, uh, in this competitive market, everybody needs that. So that is where uh, Zeev comes in. We uh, uh, started in blockchain space in 2016 and initial three to four years we did a lot of consulting worked with quite a few enterprises in financial services, supply chain, manufacturing, retail, telecom, energy and utilities, quite a few industries. And during that time, you know, one of the uh, job was to build POCs, pilots, deploy the networks, run the pilots. And, and we found uh, infrastructure management as one of the pressing need because uh, the expectation in the enterprise is the same. Whether we move from Web 2 to Web 3, the expectations are of same high throughput, security, scalability, performance, etc. So we wanted, so we built uh, Zeev as an internal tool initially for our own customers and then we realized this is a wider problem and started seeing a lot of traction. So Zeev is a low code SaaS platform that allows you to uh, deploy blockchain networks on the fly. We support multiple clouds, all the top major clouds as well as on-premise deployments. We support multiple uh, uh, blockchain protocols including all the permissions, quite a few uh, uh, products out of the suite of Hyperledger. R3 Coda, Flurry, Dragon Chain, and we're adding more and more protocols in the permission side. And not just that, we are also supporting 20 plus public protocols and some of the hybrid deployments like Flurry with Fabric or uh, Fabric with Ethereum, different kind of hybrid deployments we are supporting on the fly. And we have very sophisticated proactive monitoring and analytics that allows you to uh, uh, not just do a cloud resource uh, monitoring, but also the monitoring of the blockchain resources. And then in addition to that, the way AWS did for cloud, on the same way we have, we have built quite a few web services that can be directly uh, integrated within your application. So for example, decentralized storage. So if you want to connect, uh, uh, let's say you are storing any use case where you need, need to store the digital assets, uh, the underlying digital assets uh, uh, <clears throat> on IPFS kind of storage. You don't need to spin off your own nodes. We have a ready service which is backed by hundreds of IPFS nodes running. We have both public as, as well as uh, private kind of de deployment for IPFS. You simply use that service, plug it into your application and, and that's it. We have decentralized governance, we have IoT as a service and quite a few services that you can plug in into your application to build the application much faster. We have 15,000 plus uh, uh, developers and Web3 startups using the platform, 25 plus enterprises who are running large consortiums using our platform. So this is a, a larger snapshot of the uh, summer features that we have today. And then, you know, Ghan will talk about some of the roadmap items that we are going to bring in specifically for Hyperledger Fabric. So on the network and security side, 
we have multiple cloud provisioning. So on the same network, you can have different clouds deployed, uh, different nodes deployed on different cloud environments. And those cloud environments may be within your organization, maybe outside the organization. There's a one-click node deployment. It's highly configurable. You can see all the configurations. Um, so if we talk about Fabric, which is much more complex in terms of configurations, you get 100% of the configurations out of the console. You will never need to go back into your cloud environment to make additional changes or configurations. <coughs> so I'll pick up from here and I'll talk about you know what is underneath you know the engine uh, which powers Zeev and you know what gets you all those benefits which we just talked <coughs> about. So this stack you know the focus of the stack is decentralization. Uh, like you know we've been speaking from the very beginning that the enterprise ecosystem of course it's limited it's focused. But then, you know, whatever uh, expansion it requires, it has to be decentralized in the sense that, you know, it's well distributed under different ownerships and yet monitored. So we ensure that, you know, the stack, you know, which offers you all these you know, asset tokenization, decentralized IoT, I'll just speak one line, line about decentralized IoT, is that, you know, when we do supply chain use cases, we say that, you know, all the data is coming out of uh, Amazon Cloud IoT or Google Azure IoT Cloud which is taking, taken up from, you know, some, some truck shipment somewhere for the freshness of the goods. But then, you know, you're centralizing it if you're pushing it into the IoT cloud and then consuming back into the smart contracts or chain codes for, you know, uh, SLAs and other, other kind of, you know, uh, chain code uh, based functionalities. So we ensure that, you know, you can directly push the data into the nodes <coughs> through these, you know, specific chain codes which you can deploy and consume. And then, uh, you know, the trusted execution is, is a must for this stack to have. Uh, then distributed KYC because you're onboarding multiple organizations and when, when you do that, you need a you know, wider uh, reach uh, how your platform is monitoring uh, the, the nodes which you own, but at the same time, the other party is, is able to monitor the nodes they own and as in whole, they also see that there are some other organizations which in place, they don't control it completely, but they at least see they're there, their health status and all because this network as one is, is what is running the use case. So everybody is playing their role, but as one, they are, you know, they are to be monitored as a as, as a as a one one as a one network. Then uh, you know the, the products which we offer uh, under Zeev uh, is the permission protocols. There are multiple we support. Then the you know data APIs. So if you're deploying a supply chain use case on Apple Ledger Fabric, and you would require certain analytics out of you know the ledger which is not given by the platform uh, explicitly because platform, you know, does analytics on resources, clusters, uh, you know, the, the status, the blocks, the latencies of different parameters, then, you know, these APIs would give you enhanced capability so that you can pull the data out of the ledger about, about you know, those specific use case parameters, the supply chain, the traceability parameters, and create further analytics on top of it, which could be application specific, you know, use case specific, which might be required on your own front end applications, mobile application or the web application. Then you got, you know, ZDFS, Ravi already spoke about it. It's, it gives you the capability if you're doing a supply chain use case and you need to store goods receipt notifications, uh, you, you need to store POs and invoices in digital form because they're, they're tokenized on the chain. That's what your use case does. If it's a trade finance use case, you're doing a lot of, you know, uh, letter of credit clearance and all parties are there. You want to store those documents in a way that, that, that they are always accessible, easily accessible, and yet distributed. So you can consume this, these, these APIs right away. Then this, you know, CICD piece at the bottom, uh, I'll talk about it in a bit when I'll show you the screenshots, but this is, uh, you know, very critical to um, what happens after you have set up a network because your dev team would run into you and will ask you that, how do I start get, you know, injecting my chain codes into it? How would I upgrade my chain codes when, once deployed? And what if the ownership is already distributed? You as one organization might be running some orders and peers into your own uh, you know, cloud, but then the other stakeholders would be running it in their own. So how, you know, does the seamless upgrade on instantiation of chain codes consistently happen while you still benefit from the legacy tools you, you, your team is already using, like, you know, Git, Jenkins, Nexa, and others. So we have a very specific CLI design for, you know, the, the, the purpose, uh, to, to solve the purpose of, you know, the challenges which you have in blockchain specific CICD. It's, it's like, you know, compatible with the legacy and then yet give you the coverage on what do you need for a blockchain implementation. 
So these are, you know, um, we, we are learning every day uh, from these customers of ours, and they are like, you know, well spread. It's not just Hyperledger Fabric over here. It's like, you know, R3 Coda, it's Hyperledger Besu over here, and a lot many other protocols, and and so many use cases: trade finance, fintech, supply chain. We got, you know, some metaverse use cases as well in here, and we're learning from every day, and we're improving our platform to serve better and more op in in more optimized fashion as possible. So it's a, it's, a, it's a quick. Case study, you know, it's a trade finance ecosystem. Uh, you, we are powering. It's live already. It's a Singapore-based ecosystem. And what I would point at is that you know we have saved them 45% on their cost on running the consortium. It's a consortium, multi-party consortium, and we saved them 80% time when they wanted to go to the market. It was just uh, you know it was just a 80% reduction in time we helped them achieve and scale, so every next onboarding they had to do in their trade finance consortium, be it another bank, another exporter, importer, it was very easy, very seamless, without exposing you know, the cryptographic artifacts and things explicitly over emails and this and that way. So it happened very seamlessly, so of course, securely, and we helped them reduce a lot of time. There are other benefits, but I think I'll focus on these two um, you know, for the session's sake. Now I'll you know, run into how, how all this happens. What do you get? What do you uh, see when you sign up on Zeev? It's completely DIY. Of course, there are certain things which are very specific. We are experimenting and we are, you know, upgrading continuously. So our team comes in and helps you there. But these are DIY things that you get on the platform. You can create a network, <clears throat> and as detailed as that, you can have, you know, peers getting configured with, you know, the level DB couch lib DB configurations available to you. You can have persistent storages available to you for these services. You, you can you know download the blockchain data, the artifacts uh, to extend the network manually. So Zeev is, Zeev is not a lock-in. It's not like you come on Zeev, you get stuck. No, you still can scale your network manually if you want to. So it's not a dependency which are, we are passing on to you. It's a flexibility we are, which we are allowing you to have. But then you can still scale manually if you require. Then you know the, the visual topology is out there and it's pretty dynamic. You see whatever is happening in your network. If it is a scaling, more organization is being added, you see it there. You may or may not control them. For example, you can restart your own nodes, reset them, you can change things there, but delete them and maybe add more. But you cannot do it with the other organizations. But you would see them still. And this would tell you, you know, what nodes are syncing thinking or not. And these connectivities, these are real. So if some node gets out of the network, you would know, you would see it as well. And the platform will start, you know, giving you a lot of notifications if you would want them, <laughs> right? And then, you know, this fits in even to this kind of, you know, a complex implementation. So regardless of how many, you know, services you're running, how many organizations you're having, how bigger you're getting, of course, it's better for your business, but the platform ensures that, you know, it remains better for your business. Then you got, you know, all sort of monitoring analytics punched in right there. So your DevOps team, your engineering team, they don't have to, you know, 24-7, you know, have sleepless nights worrying about what is happening. They can, you know, simply get to this dashboard anytime they get a notification and they need to ensure that everything is fine. Or every morning they can sip coffee and just look at this dashboard and feel safe. And don't worry about their bosses ringing them and telling them, no, oh, the network is already done. What, I, what have you been doing? And this gives you analytics not just at the cluster level, I mean Kubernetes cluster level, or the resource level which is running in some cloud, Azure, AWS, uh, or Google, but it gives you the analytics on the node level as well. For example, the block count, the latency of transactions, and those kind of details. And this is the CLI which I was talking about. So we did support uh, you know, Node.js, Golang-based smart contracts, uploading into the panel and all, but then we created this CLI specifically because you know, we've been developers ourselves, and we know what developers love. They need the sound of the keyboard into their ears all the time. And this CLI ensures that. With this CLI, they can you know, connect their uh, uh, old legacy tool chains like GitHub, uh, uh, Jenkins, Nexa, and all, and then punch all the chain codes into the network consistently every time they upgrade, release a bug fix or a patch. And this propagates across the network uh, very seamlessly. And <clears throat> this is what is coming at Zeev next. So a plethora of features on Apple Edge of Fabric, including uh, the DMZ-based security architecture, which is very enterprise-focused, and these protocols. So a checkbox, and you'll have Cactus adapters available to your Fabric deployments when you'll do it after this release. Uh, thank you for you know listening to all this. This is Zeev, and we are present uh, across US, Dubai, India, and in Europe as well now. 
So you can connect us and we'll help you out uh, you know, with all the challenges you have with your fabric networks. I think this is it. This is it for the day. One last thing, you know, we have a booth here. We are having, uh, you know, uh, three thousand dollar credits free for you to start your fabric networks. You can come there. We'll give you those credits, and you can see the demonstration. Uh, explore more with us.